Good afternoon, data science community, and a welcome back to Stanford University. We're here with theCUBE's live coverage all day long at Women in Data Science Worldwide Annual Summit. My name's Savannah Peterson. Delighted to be bringing you a power-packed lineup all day. My next two guests are from ASML. Bing and Chen, thank you so much for being on the show. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's very nice to have us here. Yes, yeah. are you enjoying yourself so far at the show? Of course. Yeah. yeah it's, yes. It's, you mentioned you'd been here before the pandemic, now things are scaling. Does it feel like there's more and more women in data science? Yeah, the com I, I'm so glad to see the community is growing so fast. Back to a few years ago, I'm one of the how they, maybe 200-ish ambassadors, mm -hmm. and now we know that there are over 1,000 ambassadors. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. 1,000 ambassadors, 150,000 people in the community. Super impressive, really glad to have you here. You both have very interesting jobs, and, and ASML is more than just a semiconductor company, more than just a silicon company. So I am going to have you tell us a little bit about those. Bing, let's start with you. Okay, so uh, in ASML, that we make the most complex machines to print chips. So for most people, we think that, you know, most like just hardware, but actually, uh, we also have a lot of software engineers to work behind this. And so for me, specifically, I'm working on the image uh, processing part of, uh, of the production line. So we do uh, detect, we do, sorry, inspection and uh, metrology. So for inspection, basically means that after we get the chips that we want to uh, find the uh, uh, anomalies on the chips so that we can uh, quantify this, uh, 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 can quantify this chip, sorry. <laughs> no, you're doing great. Yeah, it's essentially oh, it's quality good, assurance. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's QA for photo lithography and, and the actual, making sure that everything that goes into these machines is going to do what we expect it to do. Exactly, and for motorology also, so they are basically taking measurements of the uh, printed patterns. So if the measurements are within the given range of the specifications, we know that these uh, patterns are printed well, they will do, the chip actually will work as we designed, but if without if uh, it is out of the range, obviously we need to rework this chip. So for both inspection and metrology, motor uh, actually we are doing the quality assurance, yes. It's going to be a tough job. I mean, we're talking about things on the micron layer too. We're talking about a very, very tiny nuance and detail here. Exactly, so we are at the resolution of nanometers. Um, Amazing. Yes. Wow, that's super cool. And Chen, you also have a very exciting job. Yeah, so I, I work with being um, in, in our Samsung office. So my job is slightly different. I work on the modeling side, inside mm -hmm. computational lithography. So you know that uh, our, uh, the, our machine keeps pushing the physics boundary and engineering boundary in every generation of our new machines. So the computational simulation part is really important. So what I'm working on is that uh, trying to build highly accurate model to a sub-nanometer level to predict the, how the optical, uh, physical chemical, and uh, how the physical chemical uh, process is happening on the wafer at a, this highly accuracy. How would, do we do that? It's actually we leveraging a large amount of, I should say exponentially growing amount of data actually through metrology and inspection to build highly accurate models. And this large amount of data actually how they enable us to unleash the power of machine learning or even deep learning at our pr production lines. Yeah. You would have to, otherwise you couldn't process all that data to be able to, yeah. I mean, we can't see what you're doing. You know, mm -hmm. you're, it's mm -hmm. such a detailed level. It's, yeah, it's so, it's so exciting. So I'm curious, we, the, this whole show is, is a real intersection of academia, of industry, of, of curiosity even. There's folks here just kind of coming to check things out. What is what are some of the career paths in academia for data science? So I'll start with you, Chen, and then uh, I'll bring it to you, Ben. Okay. Yeah. Uh, interestingly, I have both a career in say, academia and I shifted to industry. So I'm a oh, perfect person to <laughs> ask. <laughs> so I'm a physics major in undergrad, and I took my uh, say, physics PhD in atomic molecular and optical physics, and then I did one year postdoc in the Lawrence Berkeley lab, uh, just up north, 60 miles, and so on. So after that, I, I realized that I really want my, how say, my research, my work, and my 
skill sets to be applicable to contribute to real world uh, impacts. So that uh, so that a uh, few friends referred me to SML. And I, after I entered SML, my job in the research division in SML, and now I uh, have a production engineering division in SML. I really really find that SML is the best place because it combines all of my how say academia background, postdoc uh, experiences, as well as my how say programming skills, uh, physics skills, and so on. Combines everything into contributing to the how say, most challenge challenging machine in the world. At the meantime, I met many sm brilliant colleagues from multidisciplinary. For example, uh, being is an uh, electrical engineer background, and many of other my colleagues are how say, physics, chemistry, mathematics, and mechanical engineer, and so on. So it's uh, really how say, I, I should say that um, people who are having uh, academia, uh, doing uh, how they studies, researches in academia, they, they will have a, a very huge amount of opportunity in industry. Yeah. Yeah. And nowadays, all of our, all of, uh, pretty much every industry requires multidisciplinary contributions from yes. all the backgrounds. I would say that um, if you are willing to uh, enter a, a new in interesting industry, willing to learn, there, there will be tons of opportunities from my experiences. Yeah. It's definitely been a theme of this show is, mm -hmm. is this intersectionality, multiple disciplinary, cross-team collaboration. It sounds like you were a dream fit for ASML. And like you two <laughs> are dream is. teammates yeah. in, in general. Mm -hmm. what, what, other, what sort of paths have you noticed, Bing? Okay, so uh, my uh, background is a little bit different from Chen. So uh, even at the beginning of my undergraduate study, I, work, I uh, started major in image processing. So even starting from then, I have started dealing with massive data. So and uh, later on, I also got my uh, uh, PhD in uh, image processing and statistical data uh, analysis. Just a little bit of education yeah. sitting at this table with me right now. <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling uneducated by a no. mile, and I couldn't be more proud. It's great. I love it. I'm, no, yeah. just, it's just an honor. The academic, yeah. yeah. And also after the uh, my uh, uh, after I finished my degrees, actually I worked in the university for quite some years and. Uh, at that time, I actually was doing in uh, clinical imaging uh, studies. So I was doing the uh, uh, cancer treatment of, or tracking, oh, following yeah. uh, for uh, uh, for the medical school in University of Michigan, and uh, so all these through all these years in the academic that I'm vigorous rigorously trained with all the theoretical uh, uh, background and uh, also in, you know in uh, academia that most of the time we are uh, trying to develop a novel algorithm and models to uh, uh, solve the, to get a specific uh, metric optimized right and so that's the goal to get a novel uh, technologies and so that you need a lot of theoretical background, and that's not that's very useful when I uh, uh, switched my career from uh, academia to industry because in. Okay, I say in a company, most time we are encountered with uh, real, like a real world problem. Mm -hmm. So the, the data are messy, messier, let's say messier, <laughs> and uh, uh, the problems are usually at the beginning they are less well defined as in academic background. But with the rigorous that's training, a, that's there, a really good point you yeah. just made. You're saying that when we're when we're you know when you're in academia, there's there's a lot more research that's maybe led up to that moment or things coming together to intersect. So it's a little almost more scripted versus yeah. when you're in an industry business solution. Yeah, you're kind of just pulling together parts off the shelf and trying to make it up as you go and exactly. build what you need to build. Exactly, you are overwhelmed with the data that you yeah, have. Yeah. You have to make the decisions how to pre-process this data, how to clean data, and how to formulate your uh, uh, problem to a model or uh, to a real well-defined problem. Yeah. So, yeah. So with the uh, training and all the experiences you get in the academia, and that will help you great to start and to get the uh, solution. Uh, to, sorry, to get the uh, uh, formulation of the problem in the 
in the most uh, efficient time. So that's the advantage yeah. that we had transferring from academia to industry. Yeah. Well, I think that that's awesome. I mean, if there's clearly an overlap between academia and industry. I think also we're at a really interesting time just in the state of AI, ML, a lot of what's happening right now. We're going to have new folks entering the space. What you both just said is your, your background and whatever your background is, paired with some education in the space means anything's possible. You could be working on really interesting projects. Mm -hmm. And that background, that interdisciplinary background could be really compelling. Are there any very specific, and you've, you've both kind of touched on this a little bit, but I'm curious if there's some that come to mind. Are there any particular challenges in the semiconductor industry that are uniquely solved by data science or technology today that maybe would have been significantly harder to do in the past before we were at where we're at? Ah, so okay. what you mean is that uh, how the prob um, with data science uh, technologies from data science or inspired uh, in in how by data science um, methods we can solve something pro some problem better. Right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. And specifically in semiconductors. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. So uh, now nowadays uh, many of our data are coming from as metrology inspection and many of our data are coming from the how the machine log data. So those data are massive. So be before maybe five e even five years ago, we can only do down sampling of those data to extract very yes. limited amount of mm -hmm. information sure. to build um, positive empirical models with um, a few parameters, <laughs> so that so that we are how they, I should say back to that time we wasted a lot of data simply due to how the computational power not sufficient, or how the um, modeling how the model is too complicated to finish the simulation within a production needed time frame. So so that means we are uh, we are limited. Uh, back to that time. However, nowadays, we, we, we can leverage distributed computing, we can leverage uh, GPU technologies, and so on, this uh, hardware com computing powers, as well as many uh, uh, the data science methods, which were not well known before. However, now it's getting much more popular. For example, cluster technologies, imaging yeah. pro pr image processing uh, technologies, video processing, uh, audio processing, and so on. So all this, uh, the, um, uh, I should say, data science make all these technology much easier accessible, even to industrial applications, and for our, uh, for both ourselves and our customers to be more open to try these new technologies and generate more values for them and for ourselves. Yeah. So pretty much every aspect yeah. of it, to, to some degree. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For us, let's say before we do metrology and inspection, that the wafer will be uh, the will be scanned using an electron beam. So, yeah. Yeah. And uh, okay, I talked about that. These days, all the resolution is the nanometer scale, so the images are very very uh, targeted. And imagine very with much. the electron beams that the noise of the images, you know, they are much higher than uh, what we desire to be. Yeah. So, so the first step is that we need to actually pre-process these images to have better quality. And uh, now with current data science technologies, we can use all the uh, data that we have. Like uh, Chen mentioned, we don't have to uh, reduce a lot of the data or down sampling. We can use all of them, so we can get the best benefit of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's all mm -hmm. about making the world better and making yeah. our jobs yeah, let easier. Let me add one yeah. more thing. Please. So, <laughs> by all means. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm here so, to learn. So re I have a very recent example in my work. Although I couldn't dis uh, disclose the details, but I should. Uh, I I use one example. So maybe five years ago, um, how the, our computational capability uh, can mm. only afford a few hundred training examples. And now True. we can easily afford yeah. up to million training yeah. examples. That means our model's competency back that time should be um, limited, right? Yeah. Uh, but now we can leverage deep learning models mm -hmm. in our productions because the growing computational power and growing data amount. Yeah. I'm really glad mm -hmm. you brought that up because mm -hmm. what we're able to do now before even you know four years ago, right. ten years ago, is is orders and orders of magnitude yeah. more in terms of volume True. and and speed. So I, I think that's a really good point. You obviously know that sitting at the epicenter in a semiconductor company, processing power is kind of that <laughs> focal point there. But I'm really glad you brought that up. We're here celebrating International Women's Day. You, we are all passionate women in in our space. You both do a little bit of work there, don't you, for the for the working group? So tell me a little bit about. 
how you're empowering women in our field. Shannel, I'll start with you. Yeah, so so both of us are in, inside a community called SML Women in Silicon Valley, and it's part of the SML Women big, Bigger Community. So uh, our, we established this community back to the year uh, 2015, and I'm the third uh, chairwoman, and Bing works with me oh, very closely, her. contributing yeah. to the community. So the community's um, mission is to um, build a supportive uh, environment for people to um, learn, share, and lead. Um, and these weeds, the, the weeds, um, how they uh, organization is definitely one of our um, channels that we believe um, resources from WITS can be accessible to our members for their career growth, for their how they technology uh, how they pathways and career pathways and so on, improve all of them. That's why we come here and uh, we not only introduce ourselves but meet community with the community who are either academia or other industries to join the bigger community and give, uh, use that as our uh, members growing resources. I love that. And, yeah. and you obviously get excited working with her on this. Exactly, yeah. And also, like Chen mentioned, that we came here and uh, this is my first time at WIS and I'm so excited to Okay, this morning, listen to all the talks and uh, meet all the other peers, let's yeah. say. Yeah. And this community, I think that it will do a, a huge contributions to uh, promote women in uh, data science. And uh, we'll see, yeah. We're looking forward to all the brighter futures. I was just going to say, <laughs> yeah. the future is but bright. One thing I yeah. want to add is, yeah. um, inside SML, there are many, many different departments. So right. mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, software engineering, and so on. Many, many of our colleagues does not even know they uh, how they, their, their work already involves a lot of data science elements. So right. uh, that's yeah. why we want, to, yeah, we want to bring the knowledge, observations, learnings from this um, conference uh, to our um, community members, our colleagues, to let them know look, your work is how the leveraging data science already, and uh, how about joining this community to, to learn more? To yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, it mm, sounds like yeah. everyone's invited into your community. On that note, a couple last questions to close this out. For women who are just about to embark on their journey or looking at you thinking how cool your job sounds, what's your advice? Bing, I'll start with you. What's your advice to a young woman in data science right now? Yeah. Or thinking about it? Yeah, I think that, uh, oh, okay, the first thing is that uh, when Okay, when a young lady is trying to get into this field of data science, I'm sure that she has the uh, passion about it. So with passion, that's the inside the tri driving for uh, for you to get to learn uh, new uh, t uh, uh, skills to get more uh, uh, to broaden your uh, uh, view. And so I'm thinking. At the beginning, if you haven't been into this field yet, so uh, just to explore your uh, uh, area, you know that you can talk to uh, all the uh, women. I, I, I want to sus uh, specifically say women, all the data science that you scientists that you know, and talk uh, to know how their path was how they are a pro yeah. a professional path was. And uh, so that will give you some uh, insights that you know you can mm -hmm. get to your, reach your goal maybe faster. Beautiful, yeah. beautifully said. What's yeah. your advice, Chen? Yeah, so uh, one thing I want to uh, emphasize, not specifically for women who want to enter, enter data science career, is actually for every woman, is that um, how they never be afraid, um, be, be bold and be brief. Think about what yes. we can do if we are not afraid. But once we feel safer, we how they leveraging our potentials. We maximize our potentials best. Uh, yeah. Beautifully said, ladies. All right, uh, two more questions. What is your advice for someone who is looking to be an ally to women like us? They've got a young woman or any age woman in their life who's trying to fight the good fight and get in a career in 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 STEM or in data science. What do you think, Chen? What would be your advice? Uh, the question is about uh, if someone wants to be ally, how they can contribute, right? Yes. So let, let me use one uh, example I, I like most, I share with everybody. Um, one of our executive sponsor is mm. actually a male uh, <laughs> executive in our company. And he is, uh, I, I should say, he 
he, his Christmas, and he's the best male ally I've ever had in my entire Academic Plus industry career. So what I ob observe is that um, so the, he is champion, sponsor, and supporter, and mentor of um, all the how say, uh, female uh, colleagues in, in our uh, company and even globally. So I, I think to be an ally, uh, you, you can how say, feel free to take all these roles. And uh, what else? Um, how say, uh, be, um, be brief enough to stand up to help women to advocate. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Yeah. Any advice you'd like to add to that, Bing? Mm. I think that she said too well. <laughs> so that was well very that, well said. Yeah, yeah. So well, uh, I just say that. Uh, I mean, for uh, women that are already in this engineering or data science, specific data science world, that uh, we need to be more open to the, uh, let's say, newcomers, and uh, because you know, for them that um, it's it's a little bit. Intimate at the beginning, right? It's kind of of like, course it's yeah, intimidating. It's I was intimidated <laughs> even like coming in here today because you're all so smart. Yeah, yeah it's a totally. dominated field. I totally. say. we have to uh, admit, yeah. So, but you know, it's, but we we can also see that there are so many women engineers, women uh, data scientists already there, and uh, they have they have done all the uh, work. Uh, they have done go. Th they have oh, okay. They have been through the path, and uh, yeah, we just. Uh, I, I'm thinking. I just uh, uh, when we are already in this field, we can uh, uh, get uh, connected, get mm -hmm. connected with the newcomers, and uh, help. Yeah, always as always be willing to bring that person yeah, up, as and, much as and uh, can. water level yeah. rises with us all together. I think that's a really great note. Anyone who's helped you on your journey that you'd like to give a shout out to? Uh, I, I, yeah, I will say that uh, when I uh, was working uh, in uh, medical school, and uh, uh, my uh, advisor, and uh, she, uh, he's my mentor, but okay, it's uh, he, but uh, he always very helpful for me that uh, uh, his name is Chuck Meyer. Well, thank you, thank you, Chuck. And what about you, anyone who's helped you on your journey? Oh, so I, I had quite a few mentors inside SML. Uh, so, some of them are female role models. Yes. And some of them are male allies. And some of them are peers. I, from all these uh, mentors, I see um, how they, um, genuine support atti attitude. And they really want me to success. So they, sh they, they guide me and share me with many things. And later, I become a mentor myself and mentoring a young lady in my company. So I, I, re I really think that uh, how they, this type of, um, uh, how they, some, somebody gave, I, I asked one of my mentors, why do you um, want to mentor me since you are already very, very high level? He said, I want you to uh, how they mentor somebody else when you grow. So, so I want to say that to uh, everybody um, that, uh, how they, that you are going either in a growing journey or you are already well established or you are how they, very, very green, very young in this field. Keep that um, mentality in mind. This community will grow. Yeah. I love that. And, yeah. and your legacy is the impact you have on other people. That's why we yeah. invest the time. Yeah. Bing and Chen, it was so nice to have you here. Thank you for the work you're doing at ASML and within the WIDS community. Just brilliant. I'm inspired, and I hope you're all inspired wherever mm -hmm. you're tuning in. Live to theCUBE's coverage here at Stanford University. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading network for empowering females in tech.